بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سورة العاديات the surah again is a surah like many other surahs we've discussed uh, there is a difference of opinion regarding the surah whether it's Meccan or Medanin this one seems to be Medanin because it's talking about uh, fighting and jihad uh, and this was not legislated except after Hijrah uh, the name of the surah is Al-Adiyat it was sent down after Surah Al-Asr and before Surah Al-Kawthar the reason of revelation as per Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent uh, a group of people on horses uh, on, a, on a small battle uh, and he didn't receive any news from them uh, and then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this verse. Now again this in itself the, as a reason of revelation confirms that it's a, a Madanan surah. Allah Azza wa Jal starts with an oath. Allah says, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحًا By the racers panting. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the horses in a battlefield. You know, when, when a horse runs fast, it pants, there is a sound to its chest. It comes out from its chest. That panting comes out of the, uh, the chest and it's, it's very aggressive. Uh, Adiyat, uh, Shaykh al Uthaymeen said, uh, refers to horses that run very, very fast. Falmuriyat uh, qadha and by the proceed producers of sparks when striking. Now, when a horse runs fast and it strikes with its hoof the, the, uh, the rocks that are on the ground or on the floor, uh, it sparks. And uh, this is how people in, back in the old ages used to start a fire, you know. They would hit two stones together to make it spark and then start a fire. فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subha And by the chargers at dawn. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, used to send his uh, armies to different places and would uh, not attack until after the crack of dawn. If they heard Adhan, then they would know that these, these people are Muslims, so they would not attack. If they did not, then they would uh, go in. Now, uh, the uh, wisdom behind attacking at that early part of the day is that people usually are, except for Muslims, uh, they're usually sleeping. Unfortunately, nowadays, many Muslims are asleep, right? And they pray in the masjid, some of them, right? Many, unfortunately, it's, it's saddening to say that the situation of the ummah has become so bad that it's, it's like a dream to see a masjid full for Salatul Fajr. In many situations, it's not full for Salatul Jumu'ah, let alone the daily prayers, let alone the Fajr prayer. Right? So, the reason or the wisdom behind attacking or choosing that time of the, that early time of the day for attack is that your enemy is going to be resting and not expecting an attack. So, you take him by surprise. 
فَأَثَرْنَ بِهِ نَقْعَ Stirring up there by clouds of dust. You know, when the, uh, when the horses run fast, they form like a, a cloud of dust around them. فَوَسَطُنَ بِهِ جَمْعَ Arriving thereby in the center collectively. Uh, now, fighting horses or horses prepared for battles are very strong and very fast. And it depends on the fighter, the horse rider on his back, how courageous and daring he is, that's when the horse will stop. Allah is saying that they will go so fast that they will penetrate the rows of their enemies and become in the middle of the enemies. Now, all of these verses, if you notice, they're describing what? A scene of a battle. This is jihad. Jihad was not allowed before that Med Medinan period. That confirms that it is uh, a Medinan surah. So Allah described the moment the horses start running in a battlefield until they stop. Where do they stop? In the middle of their enemy. So Allah is swearing. Now, we said before that when Allah swears, Allah swears for, or an oath reflects what? Reflects the greatness of what Allah is swearing by the importance of what Allah is swearing by and the importance of the issue coming after it. Allah wants to highlight something important after an oath. So what is that? Well, it's the following verse. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ Indeed, mankind to his Lord is ungrateful. Doesn't this tell the story or the entire story? Allah says in the Quran, He has given you everything that you asked of Him. And if you try to enumerate the favors of Allah, you will utterly fail. You cannot. Inna al insana lavalumun kafar. Indeed, mankind wrongs, transgresses, and is ungrateful. Kafar is ungrateful. A, uh, one of the scholars of the Salaf, uh, which is an interesting story, said, I was trying to find a, a tafsir for the word kanud, which is the word used here in this verse, uh, which is ungratefulness. He said, and then I saw a female Bedouin who had just entered Mecca, right, with her camel after a ride. So it's not healthy for the animal to drink immediately after a ride, after they've been on a trip, right? So she's pulling that camel away from the water so it, it wouldn't hurt itself. Right? And the camel is insisting to drink. So she said, لا تكن كنودا. Don't be canood. So a canood also means a person who's guided to what benefits him and he insists to do what harms him. Right? Just like the Prophet ﷺ described. He said, my similitude is that of a man who takes you 
He tries to control you and get you away from the fire. And you insist to jump into it. And being grateful, by the way, before we continue, being grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal in itself is a favor from Allah Azza wa Jal. Being grateful for His favors is another added favor from Allah Azza wa Jal upon me and you on top of the favor. A sign of gratefulness is to practically do what Allah wants you to do with that favor. He's giving you eyes. A practical gratitude to Allah is to only use them for what pleases Allah or in what pleases Allah. So don't be looking at women or for sisters, don't be looking at men. Don't be looking at you know, video clips and what have you. And surfing the net for things that you're not supposed to be seeing and so on and so forth. Now that's practical gratitude, gratitude to Allah and gratefulness. This is how you practically express gratefulness and gratitude to Allah وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ And indeed, he is, talking about mankind, he is to that a witness. Man testifies to this through his actions and speech. Uh, now, it was said that a witness here Uh, can mean that Allah Azza wa Jal will be witnessing the slave and it was also said that the slave himself will be witness against himself for his in ingratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. And there is, as we said in, in previous sessions, when a verse can hold two different meanings or more than one meaning and there is no contradiction in giving that verse these different meanings then in principle we should say that it could mean this, this, this and that. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ And indeed he is a love of wealth intense. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّةً As Allah says. Intense love to, to, to wealth. All types of wealth. Now, this is in general, but the person whose heart comes filled with faith. The love of Allah Azza wa Jal overwhelms him. Will not be amongst this category. But that takes effort. That takes hard work. It doesn't come easy. It's not very simple for someone not to think about anything except the pleasure of Allah Azza wa It's not easy to be focused. What's your main ob uh, objective and target? Pleasing Allah. That's a, a mission that takes a lot of work, a lot of hard work and, and commitment before one can actually uh, achieve it. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ but does he not know that when the contents of the graves are scattered? Now, in the previous surah, Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about the scattering of the graves, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal is again emphasizing and reminding over and again in the Quran that 
this will take place resurrection is going to happen you will be coming out of your graves you will be scattered out of your graves so work for that day وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ And that within the breasts is obtained, meaning all secrets, all that was hidden, will become public, will become known. You will be made, will be placed in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you will be made informed of Everything. See, a lot of times we do something and we totally forget about it. We do things wrong. And days later we forget that we've ever, ever done it. But that's recorded and that will be told to me and you on the day of judgment. No escape. Even if you forgot it now. Allah Azza wa doesn't forget. And his record keepers don't forget. And don't leave anything out. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Yawma tubil al-sarair," the day when secrets in the hearts will be exposed. Everything will be exposed, and this here is a very important point to be mentioned. Uh, there is a hadith in the book of Imam Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Allahu." إن الله لا ينظر إلى صوركم ولا أموالكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم. Allah doesn't look to your outer appearance or your wealth, but rather to your hearts and your actions. Heart, intention, and action. If they confirm, right? then that's a sincere deed. That's an accepted deed. That's going to be rewarded. But the dilemma here is when what's inside is different than that which is outside. That's a disaster. Not only that a person doesn't get rewarded for it, but also he will be punished for it. إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَخَبِيرٌ Indeed, their, their, their Lord with them that day is fully acquainted. That doesn't mean that Allah is not acquainted with us and with what we, do, what we do now. But it's just to highlight that on that day, you will know that everything was recorded and was known by Him. You will come to realize that what was told to you in the Quran and in the Sunnah, be careful, Allah is all knowing, Allah is all aware. His knowledge is all-encompassing. But you didn't act upon this. You will come to realize that it's true. And Allah Azza wa Jal uh, did not use Alim. He used Khabir. Khabir is uh, a, it's one who knows the fine details and hitting matters or, or aspects of a matter. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, being ungrateful in the beginning of the surah is cured by this verse. To know that Allah Azza wa knows these fine details, these hidden secrets, right, will motivate you to be grateful to what He gives you, what He blesses you with. If you know that He knows everything, even if you're, if you're not grateful within yourself, just between you and yourself, that will be also recorded. Right? If you speak about it or act upon it. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make what's inside our heart better than what we look and our outer appearance. 
because that is going to be destructive if what we hide is rotten and we look nice. The catch here is to make what's inside coincide with what's outside. See, as, as they say, it's nice for people to see that you're good. But it's better if you're really good. Because what's nice about people seeing you good, you will hear praises, right? You will be dealt with in this life as a nice person, as a good person. But what's better for you is that you're actually good from inside. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma hamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka atubu alayk.